So my name's Nick. I'm a writer. Um, I work with brands and businesses, and I'm particularly sort of interested in how businesses and brands can make the most of their language by finding a tone of voice, finding a voice that works really hard for them, is like is true to them, and they can turn up and use all over the place. Um, so I'm just going to, that's sort of what I'm going to talk about today, because I don't know about you, I mean, I think are you, if you're in Dublin, you're in like the fifth lockdown, is that right? Um, it feels like it's the 53rd day of January already, so <laughs> this is not going to be a grammar lesson um, or death by PowerPoint. I'm mainly going to show you some examples of brands doing things that I like. Um, and then we'll, I'll, I'll share them for about half an hour. I'll talk a bit about tone of voice. And then um, if you've got any questions, we can talk at the end. Um, I run an agency called That Explains Things. Um, my official blurb is that we do three things. We help brands find their voice, tell their stories, and explain their things. And I think those three things, voice, stories, and being able to explain your stuff in your own way, I like the three superpowers of being able to communicate as a brand or a business. You know, there's lots of technical things like, you know, marketing specialities and do you know your uh, social media channels and uh, all SEO and all of that stuff. But I think those three big themes are what's really important, actually. Those are the three big ideas. Um, just to give you a bit of background on me, like nowadays I work with sort of big brands and startups, some stuff quite corporate, some sort of quite quirky and weird. It all started for me though, <laughs> 20 odd years ago. The very first thing I was ever paid to write was for Viz Magazine. Now, I don't know if you know Viz Magazine, like it used to be like a really big magazine. Now, sometimes when I talk about it, people go, oh yeah, I think my dad used to read Viz, which makes me feel old and sad. But they were, the first thing I ever wrote for money was for Viz. And I wrote and drew a cartoon strip and I sent it in. And before they publish it and pay me, they sent me a contract to sign. Um, and the contract had this little box in it um, that said this. If you agree to the offer below, please sign one copy of this agreement and return it to us at the address above. Keep the other in a safe place for your own reference. If you're registered for VAT, please enclose a VAT invoice when returning the form. If you aren't, you don't want to be, I can tell you, it's a bigger pain in the ass than piles. And so I remember thinking, like, firstly, are they allowed to do this? Because isn't this like an official contract? Um, and then I, was, I thought, oh, of course, well, they're Viz, and that's what they're like like it's stupid and rude and they're even stupid and rude in their contract and obviously this was like 1996 I didn't think oh what a distinctive tone of voice viz have but that's really what's going on you know they know who they are and they do that in words all the time and then over the years that really stuck with me and has become one of the things I really remembered about viz is they even took care of this really tiny little detail in a document that maybe like 30 people a year would see uh, and that just sort of left me with the idea of like, oh, that seems a really interesting thing to do with language and ultimately ended up being my job. So let me just talk a little bit about what I think is really effective in communication. I'm going to show you this is what I think is the one of the best bits of writing I've ever seen. Uh, it's from a town called Griffin in Georgia, America. So I'd just like you to imagine, <laughs> imagine you're driving. Uh, like when, when we used to go outside. Um, imagine you're driving along and all of a sudden you see this sign. Now, obviously you're all on mute so we can't have a conversation about this, but I just think this is one of the best bits of writing I've ever seen. Like partly, like it just makes you sit up and stop. If you hit this sign, you will hit that bridge. Like, it's super helpful. The standard version in the UK of this is like a little red triangle with like maximum height three meters written in it, which is like actually not that much use. You know, who knows the height of their vehicle? Um, so it's really direct, it's really helpful, and it's got a really strong voice to it. 
I mean, I don't know about you, but what I hear when I read this, it's like, if you hit this sign, you'll hit that bridge, you idiot. Um, and just all of that attitude comes across in the sign. In fact, I tracked down the guy who took this photo because I've shown it so many times. I, saw, I felt like I should pay him some money. Um, and I tracked him down and it turned out that the bridge has now been demolished, but they have put the sign in the town museum because the town is so proud of it because it, they feel it's like their voice of like no nonsense, straight talking. Um, so anyway, I just thought that was terrific. Like that, if you only need one example of how to communicate it's effectively, it's that. It's really direct, it's really helpful. It's got a really strong voice and it's really unexpected. Like, I think that's a really great lesson. There's things we write all the time that we have to communicate all the time. And there's always a different way if you're thinking hard about it. Um, here, just because I'm like slightly missing travel, here's something from a hotel in Barcelona. So, uh, I went to, I got to this hotel, I did what I always do is you check in, you go up to the room, you go to the bathroom, you're like, right, what are the freebies? And on the shelf was this. This is the cutest soap that you will steal from a hotel. Enjoy it. And again, I just really like that because it's a really good bit of, you know, not just in general, that idea of put yourself in your reader's shoes but thinking specifically, what, where is my reader standing and what exactly are they thinking at the precise moment they read these words? I just think that is a terrific lesson. And then just to let all the words do all the work, you know, it's not fancy design, it's not even a nice typeface. It's just really basic, uh, really memorable. Friend from America sent me this. Uh, this is a lovely example of using your tone of voice to be to really stand out amongst competitors so there's a whole um in america there's a whole thing with grilled cheese trucks like sort of fast food trucks where, where you buy cheap grilled cheese sandwich big in america like sort of hot dog stands uh they all look exactly the same they've usually got a cartoon picture of uh, a little character made of grilled cheese not this guy he's got the angry grilled cheese van one dollar grilled cheese, no change given. Sort out your own shit. Menu, grilled cheese, one dollar, that's enough. If you need a drink, go to the place that sells drink. Get your wallets out, but don't get your hopes up. And again, this is just fantastic. Like he's selling one dollar grilled cheese. It's the same as all the other grilled cheese. And yet just by really being unpleasantly aggressive about it, suddenly he stands out a mile. Everybody's talking about it. Um, and again, there's a thing there, I think, for me, about part of being a distinctive brand is not being afraid to put off the customers you don't want. Um, and this is a really brave example of that, I think. You know, attract the people that get the joke, put off the people who don't, and sell more cheese for a dollar. Uh, here's a lovely example of tone of voice from a cheese, online cheese retailer, or like a, a cheese by post with a fantastically over the top, everything about this is fantastically over the top, laffinage de fromage. Um, and then instead of going, thanks, we've sent your order, it'll be with you on Tuesday. Hi, Hannah, thanks for placing an order. Your order will be cut by hand whilst the soothing notes of Brian Adams, everything I do, I do it for you, is played. We will place your cheese on its bed of super biodegradable watsits, which will provide the utmost comfort and protection on its pilgrimage ahead. Our heads will be bowed in silence before chanting, mostly in rhythm, sacred verses to ensure your fromage starts its journey enlightened before its box is placed on a plinth of ancient stone awaiting its collection from our team of trusty delivery drivers. So they've taken just this really normal moment and just gone completely over the top with it, which I just think is lovely. Um, is another example from uh, this is a company called Painter, who make just achingly hipster jackets in limited edition runs, um, and they have two care level, two care labels in their product. One is about caring for your jacket, and the other one, as you can see on the right, is taking care of yourself. Wake up early, exercise first thing, drink good coffee, stop worrying, less screen time, read books, have a bowl of cocoa pops. Um, and Painter, they're only a couple of years old, they're still quite small. Um, on Instagram, 
their followers and even not even their followers, just people who get to know about them, share more pictures of the label than they do of the jackets. Um, and I just think that's amazing. Like one tiny little noticing the opportunity to put words in an unexpected place um, and they become famous, as famous for that as for the jackets. Uh, and that is just literally, that is their tone of voice doing their marketing for them. Uh, so I think that is really lovely. Uh, Tony's Chocoloni. I don't know if you know Tony's Chocoloni. So they do like, you know, they're like innocent drinks of chocolate bars. They're really fun, but they've also got a really serious uh, sort of social thing going on about, you know, entirely cru cruelty free supply chain, completely ethically sourced chocolates. Uh, and again, somebody shared this on, on LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. It's their employment agreement. Um, and it's just done like a sort of flowchart comic. It's one page, um, like just at a glance, you can see like, ouch, you're going too fast. Back to the start. Hooray. It's like a sort of snakes and ladders thing, which instantly, you're like, well, that is unusual for an employment agreement. And then just things like, on a serious note, part one, you agree that you will handle all confidential Tony's information mm, confidentially. Uh, we'll take your lovely mug shot and put it on a mug, amongst other things. So they're just doing these really nice little things with their language in a really unexpected place. This is their employment agreement. Most people don't bother to treat this uh, as a good bit of communication. And again, like people sharing it on LinkedIn, you know, they're not sharing Tony's Chocoloni's marketing or their website. They're sharing their employment contract. And I think that is just a fantastic lesson about making the small stuff work really hard for you. Where are the, where are the opportunities that nobody else is spotting? And especially if you're, you know, you work for yourself or you work for a small business or a startup, um, you can do that stuff really cheaply. Like just by paying attention to the words, you can do something different from everyone else uh, that gets you talked about, doesn't cost you loads of money, doesn't even take that long to do. Um, so in fact, I'm just going to repeat that point. So when I'm talking to big brands about tone of voice, you know, applying this voice to all the stuff they're doing, I'm quite often talking about these three quite big ideas, you know, making your brand distinctive and consistent, making and saving you money and time and sanity quite often if you're in a large organization if you're writing something or getting something briefed or signed off it takes forever if everyone's got an opinion on what it should sound like and just having a clear tone of voice where you can go no actually it's like this that helps make those conversations more objective and sometimes even with some organizations that i work for changing the voice of the organization usually getting a more human voice in a corporate environment can sort of kickstart a culture change. Um, those are really big ideas, I think. You know, if you work for large organizations, that stuff is really interesting. If you work for smaller places, it is just that idea of your voice gives you ways of punching above your weight cheaply and quickly and being able to like sort of turn it around, spot an opportunity, um, so that's just sort of what, like my general thing about tone of voice it is like a massively undervalued way of standing out from everybody else, engaging with your customers, just getting people talking about you, having more fun with your language, just like that stuff is more enjoyable to write. Um, and so over the last couple of years, I've been working on, well, that's fine. And I work with clients who want me to help them do that. But also how could I help more people do that for themselves? So basically, I invented this thing called Voicebox, which is a method for helping brands and startups uh, find and define and use their own tone of voice, or for copywriters or creatives to help their clients with tone of voice. I stuck it all in this box. It's called Voicebox. It comes, you know, it's load of it's a load of stuff, sort of games and creative prompts and the process that I use. Um, what I think I'll, I'll just run you through today is I think the bit that people find the most useful is at the heart of Voicebox is I am saying they're basically sort of 11 different distinctive tones of voice. I call them the primary voices that are like the sort of main themes that tones of voice tend to group into. Um, 
because quite often I think we sort of think of like there are two tones of voice there's corporate and funny like or there's like human and innocent like innocent drinks is the one that everyone talks about for about 10 years I would have to answer the phone about every week and somebody would say can you make us sound more like innocent drinks I have to go no because you do nuclear waste disposal that would be a terrible tone of voice for you so I'm just going to share with you very quickly what I think these 11 main voices are and that like the thing about voice boxes like which ones feel right for you and how do you mix them together to get a really distinctive voice um, but I think it'd be useful if I just share these 11 uh, it might spark something in you and also I just think we can learn some of the things for how people have applied these voices so the first voice uh, is what I call the playful child which is you know Tony's Chocoloni innocent drinks just uh, being quite quirky and fun uh, playing sort of low status, if you like. But here's an example from Kalua, who are a South African airline, who take that idea and then apply it in a really unexpected industry. Like airlines are normally all about safety and seriousness. Um, and then here's Kalula, basically treating their planes like their innocent smoothie bottles. Flying 101, sunroof, front door, our door is always open unless we're at 41,000 feet. Fuel tanks, go-go juice, nose cone, radar antenna in a really big dish inside. So like, weirdly, you learn quite a lot about planes. They do it in a really funny way. Um, and a friend of mine was in um, Cape Town at an airport and she sent me a picture of everyone just standing at the window as one of these planes rolled, like taxied past because everyone was just taking photos of it. And again, that's like, it's entirely their tone of voice that is doing that. And I think there's also a thing there about they're using a voice that we would normally think of as applying to quite simple and fun products, you know, food and drink packaging, stuff like that. And they're using it in a really unexpected uh, industry, which again, gives them more oomph. Uh, the second voice is the simplifier, just saying a lot less. So this packaging is from uh, an American healthcare brand called Help Remedies. If you think about that aisle in the supermarket where all the medicines are, um, everything is normally really shouty. There's lots of red and gold and silver, and it's all about, you know, 200 milligrams of caffeine and all of this stuff. And Help Remedies have taken a completely different approach. Very calm, very simple. They don't even put you know, the, the main thing you see isn't the name of the product. It's the name of the thing that their customers are saying. Help, I can't see. Help, I have a headache. Help, I have an aching body. Help, I have allergies. Um, and again, I think this is, it looks really, like it looks simple because, you know, there's just a few words. It's really hard to do to have that confidence to say a lot less than other people. Um, I love this little thing on the back of the box as well. This is on their plasters. Um, skin tone is not skin tone for most people. Skin tone is what Americans call pink plasters. It's just some odd combo of pink and brown. Rather than take a guess at what your skin tone might be, we've left our bandages white. So playful child, simplifier, energizer. So brands that are completely opposite of simplifier have just crank up the pace and enthusiasm and energy. This is an Australian organization called Pub Choir. Um, oh, I'll read it to you, it explains what they do, but it's also absolutely packed with energy. Pub Choir explained fast. Everybody can sing and we're on a mission to prove it. Pack yourself into a pub with hundreds of strangers. Learn a song in three part harmony in 90 minutes, perform it twice. And if the publishing gods are smiling, have it immortalized in video forever. No audition, no solos, no commitment, no sheet music, no worries. So like super fast, loads of energy. Like grammatically what's going on is it's full of verbs. Like there's loads of action, pack, learn, perform. Like it's just loads of energy and movement. Uh, so that's the third voice. And that like that's quite common if you think of brands like Nike, um, that sort of loads of energy, loads of doing. Uh, fourth one is the warm friend, um, which I think is often the voice that brands are going for and slightly get wrong by going a bit over the top. Here's a lovely, oh, sorry. 
let's have no sorry it's the purposeful voice next let me do that one so the serious voice um serious without being corporate this is an example from tesco um from right at the start of the pandemic so before uh, before even governments had got their messaging together and like basically we we're all shitting ourselves and um, it was actually supermarkets that came out first with reassuring it's okay we've got this you know yes the shelves are empty but we're doing you know we're, we're on top of this and I think this voice of being really serious and really on top of things uh, together we can do this it's fair to say that we find ourselves in uncharted waters COVID-19 is bringing a change to the UK and it's clear that lots of things are going to have to shift around in order to help us cope. So that idea of it's really serious but it doesn't become formal. Um, it's quite hard to do. Well, part of what's hard to do is the instinct to make jokes or to be like just to be like make that extra connection is really strong but to play it absolutely dead straight and be a safe pair of hands and reassuring. That's what I call the purposeful voice. It's quite often what corporate is going for, but gets wrong. Um, God knows what slide's gonna come next. I think it's gonna be the straight talker. Um, and if you remember Ron Seal, so that really uh, saying everything really direct, calling a spade a spade, that voice. Um, here's an example again from somebody in an unexpected sector. This is from Hypo Swiss, who are a posh, Swiss private bank doing a very Ron Seal voice. It will never be about you and us. It will always be about your money. Um, I just love the directness of that. And it, of what again, what it makes me realize is you suddenly realize that all banks are trying desperately to be your friend. And they're all going for a sort of friendly, warm voice. Uh, and here are Hyper Swiss having the confidence to go, no, we're not going to do that. No, we're not going to be warm at all. We're just going to be dead straight. Um, now's the one friend uh, here's a, this is a lovely example from a plumber like, as far as I can tell just like a one man band and again I think it's that unexpected category like he's obviously realised that um, the sort of blokiness of plumbers might put off people so he's deliberately got a really warm voice that plumber's name is Carl, a one-man pipework professional, ready to work wonders on your kitchen, bathroom, or central heating. I'm based in the Wirral, but can be anywhere in Cheshire, Liverpool, and North Wales within the hour. Da, 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 da. Anyway, I'll stop going on because you've got a job that needs doing. Get in touch. I'll tell you how much it'll be and how soon I can do it. So, and it may, again, makes you realise like how few voices like this, like this, like professional trades, have stopped and thought, how do I do something different? And what is it my customers might actually really need? They need reassurance that if they're gonna get some hairy assed bloke in their house, it's gonna be nice. So it's all there in a warm friend voice. It's lovely. Um, it's completely the opposite now from an American woman called Ash Amberge, who runs a thing called the Middle Finger Project, which is basically aimed at women who are frustrated with the dullness of their lives and want to change things up. Um, I can't read the top of it because the my Zoom thing is in the way. Um, what does it say at the top? Give the finger to the things you're supposed to do. For when your life feels like it's one giant to-do list full of tasks you're checking off and make other people happy while you're faking the fuck out of your smiles and your orgasms. Like it's just fantastically in your face. This is the fire starter voice. Uh, the more I see people doing these sort of voices, the more it's basically anyone who'll swear at you uh, in copy selling their products or services is usually doing something really interesting and uh, really provocative. Give the finger to the predictable but boring path. Turns out a sensible pair of pantyhose and knowing exactly what time the garbage gets collected every week does not make for a life well lived. Uh, and again, like it's really bold, it's really in your face, it's going to put off as many people as it attracts. Absolutely fantastic. Um, probably completely the other end of the spectrum. If the fire starter is loads of personality, loads of opinion, deliberately getting a reaction, the neutraliser voice is deliberately the other way. Gov.uk, a really good example of this, completely plain. 
uh, no opinion, no emotion, no anything at all. Uh, like here's how they talk about death. Register when what to do when someone dies. Register the death. Register the death within five days. Eight in Scotland. This includes weekends and bank holidays. Before you can register the death, you'll need either. Like it's completely neutral. There's no um, you know at this difficult time. There's no you know we're sorry for your loss. Nothing at all. Um, and I talked to the woman Sarah Richards who ran this team as they pulled together like literally hundreds of government sites which each had different voices into one voice she was like well so when we looked at it it was really clear people only come to government websites uh, because they owe the government money or because they've got a problem that needs sorting out you don't come to be delighted or entertained so get out of the way you can't make any assumptions about why people are here um it's it's quite an unusual choice, but for the right people, it's really strong. And I think what's interesting is it takes as much effort to write this stuff well as it does to write a voice with loads of personality and opinion. You know, they've got really strong guidelines. They've got teams of writers and editors, you know, having to work just as hard to get this really neutral tone, uh, which I think is really fascinating. Uh, just a couple more. The Centralist. Voices that are deliberately evoking, like capturing your senses. This is Pucker Tees, who like are really over the top with this. And like every product description is sort of like a guided meditation that is really designed to sort of tick, like taste, feel, sight, sound. It's all there. Imagine a sun-drenched orchard where you dance with delight as cinnamon tree branches swirl overhead. One moment a jive of ginger root and spicy clove, the next chamomile flowers and sweet orange cushion your step. Like it's really lovely to read out. It's a little bit like poetry because um, like the sound and the feel of the language um, has got loads of attention. It's quite hard to get this right without getting really cliched. And there are lots of different ways to, you know, lots of different products and ways you could do this, but voices that are evoking your senses uh the tenth voice i call the impersonators so basically any voice which just rips off a voice that you know from popular culture or history like lots of hipster brands do victorian gentlemen uh, you know it might be chewing gum or barbers or whatever but they go for a sort of posh old-fashioned voice this is hippies who sell uh, uh they're like snacks made of chickpeas and they've basically gone for a sort of 60s hippie voice like hippies is the name of their product power to the people peas love and giving back like it's fun it's quite daft the great advantage of this voice is you only need to do it a little bit and everyone gets it like we're really tuned into it um hendrix gin do a sort of edwardian alice in wonderland thing and you only need to read a couple of lines of their stuff and you completely get the vibe they're going for so if you need a tone of voice really quickly, just rip off one that exists in sort of people's minds already and you can do something interesting really fast with it. Uh, very last one, storytellers. So, you know, obviously every brand can tell stories, but some brands are really built around stories. Um, I think a perfect example of this is Jack Daniels. Um, because they've got like they anchor themselves in two things there's the character of Jack Daniel himself who you know his his life was just full of amazing stories and then there's also Lynchburg Tennessee which is the town where their distillery is uh, is also full of you know fantastic weirdness uh, not least of all the fact that it's in a dry county so although you can buy Jack Daniels there and they can make it there you can't drink it in a bar which is just like a fantastic, instantly amazing, memorable story that you can make part of your brand. So obviously all brands can tell stories, but like some brands are just really, they're absolutely steeped in them. So I feel like I've banged through those really quickly. Um, I'll share a link just in a couple of minutes. Uh, if there's a little booklet you can get from my website or by popping your email in the chat with those 11 voices in, if they're helpful for you to think through either for yourselves or your own brands or for your clients. Um, but I just really want to reiterate, I think the, the big opportunity here um, is like 
using of tone of voice, finding a voice that helps you punch above your weight. You know, what do you write either for yourselves or the businesses you work for that is boring or a missed opportunity that you can really make interesting? You know, are the places you can add words like painter jackets, like little unexpected places in your packaging or on your website or on your products that people are going to take photos of and share? You know, can you like the middle finger project? Can you give one of your products or services a really unexpected or interesting name that's going to get people talking? I think those are like the quick wins in a way that you can use tone of voice to work really hard for you. So drop me an email at nick at thatexplainsthings.com or pop your email in the chat. Um, if you're like, oh yes, I think I would like to buy Voicebox, that would be amazing, obviously. Um, there's a discount code, stick the code 500 in the box, you get it for 500 quid instead of 600 quid. <laughs>